Evening everybody. Well tonight we're going to take a look at some factoring special cases. Um, we'll take a look at how you can identify a polynomial and see if there's a shortcut so that you can factor a lot quicker than just using your uh, simple box and T and grouping method. So uh, let's get started. Make sure you've got your pencils and notebooks ready and we'll begin. Okay, well, you can see over here that I've taken uh, two binomials, an x plus 3 times an x plus 3, and I've used the box method and found x squared, 3x, and 9. And if we bring those together, we have x squared plus 3x plus 3x plus 9. And that obviously simplifies to x squared plus 6x plus 9. And as you can see, when we got started here, we had the exact same binomial. In fact, we could have written this x plus 3 squared. And here we have 4x plus 5 times 4x plus 5, and I've done the math here, and I'm going to write that for you. 16x squared plus 40x plus 25. And so what I'd like to show you tonight is how we can take a look at a polynomial like this or a polynomial like this and identify very quickly whether or not it's a perfect square whether or not it's the same binomial times itself so how do I do that well this x is really x times x right and this 9 is really 3 times 3 and so here we have 3 x and we have how many of them we have two okay so really the pattern to see is is there a perfect square to this perfect square of one is one is there a perfect square of nine square root sorry it is three okay so that looks good but now I just have to make sure do I have double the amount in the B area well, let's take a look. I have 3x times 2 gives me 6x. Now, it may sound very busy right now, but let's take another look at this example. Square root of 16 is 4. Square root of 25 is 5. But to make sure that this works, 4 times 5 is 20. And we said, how many of these do we have? Two. Do I have 40 in the middle? Yes. So now I have a perfect square. All right. So really what we're going to be doing is here, we've got our a times x squared. And we're just going to take the square root of that, right? We've got our c. And we're going to take the square root of that. And we're going to put them together in the middle. So let's take a quick look at some examples and, and move our way through this very quickly. So, perfect square trinomial. Is it a perfect square? Well, the square root of 4x squared is 2x. The square root of 9 is 3 or negative 3. And then I'm going to do 2 times 3 is 6. 6 times 2 is 12 perfect square trinomial. Square root of 4x squared is 2x. Square root of 9, I know it has to be the negative because this is negative. 2 times 3 is 6. 6 times 2 is 12. So every single time we know that we have two b components, right, from our square. In here we have a b and we have a b, so we have to multiply that by 2 and they have to be identical. Square root of x squared is 1, so I'm just going to write x. Square root of 16 is 4. 4 times x is 4x times 2 is 8x. Can I use this method to factor this trinomial? And hopefully you'll say the answer is no. What would this have to be? x squared plus 16 what x value would fit in here and make it work. Well, let's take another look. Square root of x squared is x. 
square root of 16 is 4. 4x Four times 2 is 8x. And so if this was 8x, then we could say we had x plus 4 squared. Remember, if you cannot do the shortcut, you can always revert back to your b, a, c. So if we forgot, we could always say, I'm multiplying to 36, and I'm adding to negative 12. Negative 6 times negative 6. I go through all my grouping, and I'll end up with 2x minus 3 squared. Okay, so what I'd like for you to do now is practice these three. I promise you all three actually work. And if you get stuck, go back and take a look at the method that I used. All right, go back and take a look. I took the square root. I took the square root. And then I took this times this times 2. And I checked. If it fits, then that's my answer. If it doesn't, then I can't use it and I cross it out. Okay, so I want you to copy down these three equations or these three polynomials and I want you to bring those in tomorrow. Okay, so you can pause and work on those right now. I think that's a lot easier than watching the rest of the video. Once you've solved those, let's move on. The second set of special cases is the difference of two squares. And this occurs when we have a number or a binomial that looks almost the same. And the only difference is, is that we have a plus and a minus. And you can see how this gets built. We have 2x minus 3 and 2x plus 3. I've got my 4x squared plus 6 and minus 6 and my minus 9. And because of that plus and minus, this disappears and I'm left with binomial with only two terms and so it is a difference we have a minus so that makes it a difference of two squares this is a perfect square 4x squared and this is a perfect square 9 if I cannot if there is no perfect if there's no square root if there's no square root then I don't have perfect squares and I don't have difference of two squares so once I see that, I can come right to this and say square root of, 2x, of 4x squared is 2x. It's a difference. Square root of 9 plus 3. Rewrite it. 2x minus 3. Remember, we have to have both signs here so that we end up with our b values being eliminated. Let me do a couple more for you x squared minus 81, square root of x is x, square root of 81 is 9, and I'm done. Okay, perfect square, perfect square. Is there a square root of 9x squared? Absolutely, 3x. Is there a square root of 121? Absolutely, 11 and then I write the positive. Getting more complicated, but let's take a look at it. Is there a square root of 16x squared? 4x. Is there a square root of 9y squared? Well, absolutely. 3y. 3y times 3y gives me 3y squared. And then I write the positive. How could you check this? Well, we could do the box method and see that my negative 3y times 4x and my positive 4x times 3y would eliminate each other. And all I would be left with is 16x squared and negative 9y squared. Okay, box method would show that I had minus 9x and positive 9x, which would eliminate the b. And all I'd be left with is x squared and negative 81. Again, could you do the box method or the T method with this? My B is 0. My AC here is negative 81. Two numbers that multiply against each other 
and add to zero. Negative nine and positive nine. Negative nine and positive nine. Pretty straightforward. The key here is always it has to be a difference. A difference. If that's a plus sign, it doesn't work. It does not work. Okay, it has to be the difference of two squares. And it has to be the difference of two squares that I can find the square root of. Okay, so two more questions for you to solve. Again, these work. These should take you just a few minutes. And then tomorrow we'll have a chance to take a look at some more complicated ones. But these are the really straightforward. Please go back and watch the video again if you have questions. Otherwise, answer the five. Be prepared to discuss them in class. And I will see you tomorrow.